Well, hello. It's another wonderful day here in Canterbury. I, I, I just do not. High cloud and a bit of sun coming out. Supposed to be 23 later in the day. But Frank, you're a bit in the blind at the moment, are you up there? Yes, we've got a good Waikato uh, fog here. I can see about oh, probably four metres now. I can <laughs> nearly see to our driveway, which is about four metres away. Ooh, ooh. But oh, it will well. turn out a good day. Well, that's, just, that's normally the same here when we have a good fog. It burns off and it's a beautiful Canterbury day. So we're starting with a beautiful Canterbury day. That's the way to be. Okay, so um, this week, just about, oh, I've got about five or six things we can have a chat about. Um, and you've, um, prior to coming on air, we had a chat. So Frank and I know what we're talking about. <laughs> but um, you made mention of the, um, the Herald article by... Um, David Fisher, who was interviewing Chris Pink, who's the Minister of Veterans Affairs, and some of the things that fell out of that for you, Frank. What what are your uh, thoughts on this article? Well, the, the amazing thing, the, the, well, one of the first things that opened my eyes was it's when he said that they have no record of how many veterans there are. Now, that amazed me. Um, you know, I just thought about it a few minutes ago when I was talking to you there. The Navy numbers started at one and went up to 23,000, what, 20,300 and something or other. Well, there we go. We know how many sailors we had. Yeah. Um, that, that absolutely amazed me. Another thing, Pink even said himself, he says, oh, in Australia, I'm a veteran. In New Zealand, I aren't. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, he served in New Zealand Navy. <laughs> So, so just in case you haven't seen it, this is a, um, it was in the Herald, and it's, um, I think it's behind the paywall, the premium paywall on the Herald, but it, uh, it's an interesting interview in which the minister sets out his um, kind of agenda while he's in office over the next three years. Number one on the list is certainly getting sorted who is a veteran. Uh, that's high on his list of priorities, and as uh, Frank's pointed out, He's served both in Australia and New Zealand. Here he's not a veteran. Uh, he is in Australia. So there you go. Go figure. Um, it also makes mention of um, <clears throat> the fact that the two, NZ Defence and Veterans Affairs, are uh, sitting together, and he's questioning whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Um, I know there's been a lot of chat over time about maybe they should be two separate entities instead of one being a part of the other. Uh, that may improve the delivery of service. Um, now, I'm not sure it was there, or it might have been in one of the other things I read yesterday. But just a, a quick note on the VIP services. Apparently, the um, the budgets ballooned from $9 million to $28 yeah. million. Yeah. Which is, um, that was quite astounding. I was quite amazed by that um, jump. And it was only over, I think, about nine years or something. Yeah. Is, that right? is that right? From 2015 yeah. to, to yeah. this year. So that's quite a huge jump. Um, so maybe that's why um, they've attacked VIP services as the first thing to, uh, to reduce or to try and cut back. So we'll see how that works. And I think the other thing he was talking about is trying to do better for the veteran. The veterans deserve better. Um, and he's a bit critical of those who've gone before him who haven't done a good job in um, ensuring that the processes for veterans who are applying for um, uh, support from Veterans Affairs uh, is easy and, um, and quite quick, as opposed to dragging out for years in some cases. So um, what I've got the uh, a copy of that article. And um, either later on today or tomorrow, it will appear on our Facebook page and our website. So you can have a read of that. Also, there will be a um, the latest news from uh, RNZ RSA. So there's quite a bit of information in that. We'll get that out there so you can have a, have a read. And it talks about the future of the RNZ RSA, what happened at the, uh, the National Council um, back in February, and the issues that were raised and how people think things should be addressed. So there was quite some good stuff in there. It's a bit of a lengthy read, so, um, you know, quiet Sunday morning with your hot cup of tea and bacon and eggs for breakfast, have a read of that. <clears throat> 
So there we go. There's a couple of things. Anything else out of you? For, for, you've been communicating with um, Veterans Affairs. Yeah, eventually I got a reply to my letter last night of all times. I don't know why they come to me at night. Um, on my letter um, inquiring as to why they had um, changed the Veterans Independence Programme, and I suggested that it was all to do with money, lack of staff, the big one, money. And as you said, they the bill has ballooned from, I think it was, is it five or nine million, 28 million. So it tells you right there that it's money. Yeah. That's the only thing that it can be because um, apart from him telling me that um, they're having to deal with so many uh, veterans who are ill and um, – where was the words? I'm trying to word the used them. Um, oh, ill or ill or injured from their military service, that they cannot handle the numbers. Um, which once again, they are short of staff. Which I pointed out to this gentleman. Well, I didn't point it out to him. I pointed out to Mister Pink, who passed my letter on to Veterans Affairs which he still hasn't replied my second letter, asking that was not the idea of it. You were to do something yourself. <laughs> so um, I still haven't had a reply to that. But um, it's it just boils down to money. Yeah, That's all it is. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for that, um, Frank. And appropriate that you're a naval communicator or former naval communicator if you're communicating now with Veterans Affairs at the highest of levels. Yeah, I tried it in Morse code, but none of them can read it. <laughs> so um, also last week, interesting um, that um, Major General John Boswell, DSD, um, is leaving the service after 40 years and going on to other things. So um, we thank him for his service and we wish him well in his new civilian role with, um, I think it's the Marlborough District Council. So that'll be a bit of a change from um, uniforms everywhere. So we wish him well with that and for him and his family. Also in the week, um, oh, I think it was, I think it was Monday this week, the RNZAF turned 87, the 87th right. birthday. Um, appropriate that um, Warbirds over Wanaka was just um, over the Easter weekend as well. So that's quite, um, quite good. <coughs> and, so last week, I think we put out there a little bit of a, you know, if you're in the queue for VIP services and you've been delayed, let us know. Haven't had any feedback from that, but I did get some feedback from a, a veteran who had been in the queue for um, some specialist care arranged through Veterans Affairs, all set to go to the appointment on the, the given day when uh, he received notification that Veterans Affairs weren't going to pay for that, and they were going to try and organise it through the public health system. Now, I think, Frank, that starts to, to um, indicate your message. Yeah. about It's about the money. You're trying to save some money here. But this is a person who, um, you know, he's uh, entitled under the Act because he's got operational uh, qualifying operational service to get some service and even him they're pushing to the um to the public system which we all know is well overloaded at the moment so yeah. this is indicative of even more problems i mean you don't have to go far uh, was it the um was it the man or two where we had someone attacked over the weekend with a machete yeah 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 so staff who are already under stress from dealing with the sheer volumes of people, uh, even more so now because they're being cut back. Uh, and there's an overload. So if we keep focusing uh, the veterans who need care into the public health system, I see two things going to happen. One, the delay time to get your service will increase. And secondly, perhaps the levels of care is going to drop a bit because the staff are uh, working beyond the maximum, which is more than we can ask of them. And so um, we've got to keep watching the space because I think in the next uh, 12 months at least, things aren't going to be sweet in New Zealand, I can tell you. Uh, but there you go. 
Any thoughts on those, Frank? No, I, I, I just, yeah, exactly right. It's, it, things are getting, I'm sure they're going from bad to worse. Um, and having had hospital um, visits and waiting times and weird and wonderful hours, finally getting to see a doctor, um, I, I, it just amazes me. And they, they say, if you're sitting there for 10 hours, as we were, and nothing happens, that no wonder people get upset. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean to say their television was such a boring television they had. Even if they put something on that that was of interest to watch. I was sick of uh, watching the continual tape of immunization, cervical cancer, breast cancer, bowel treatment. <laughs> That's just what you need when you're sick in a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to distract you from your problems. <laughs> right, so that's um that's the, the news part, the information part for the day. So um we'll flick over now to um to Frank and he'll do the crossing the bar. And uh, I think quite noticeable, um, Frank, the um, what you were saying about the guy from the Arizona. Yes, he was the uh, last member of the ship's crew that was on it when it was sunk in Pearl Harbor. And um, he finally passed away, and he is going to be interned in the Arizona. And he was 103 years of age. Wow. So um, it's a, a, a milestone we're uh, coming across quite regularly now. And I was only saying a few seconds ago, the number of World War II veterans now are starting to plummet quite quickly. Yes, yes. Right, shall I carry on then with the... Indeed, go right ahead. Right. Hippera Solomon, NZ 7934, World War II, um, crossed the bar on the 21st of... Oh, what have I done here? I've got the date wrong. Uh, he joined as an ordinary seaman, um, but no further details are available. Hazel Dean, Arthur Herbert, or known as Bill, NZ13417, RNZN, Korean veteran, joined as a boy seaman in uh, 1950, uh, passed away in Taranaki Base Hospital on 27th of March 2024. There has been uh, a private cremation um, after the wishes of Arthur. Please accept our condolences to the families of those seamen. Thank you, Frank. 472849, Alan E. Roberts, uh, RNZ Artillery, uh, call time on the 29th of March, 2024, aged 82. Alan served in 161 Battery from late 1968 to late 1969 in South Vietnam in the transport section. 935179 Gleeman K. Clem Edmonds, NZ Regiment, RNZIR, has called time in Christchurch, 28th of March 2024, and marched off. Clem served in Bravo Company 1RNZIR, 1964 to 66, doing both the 65 and 66 tours to Borneo. Delta 46762. Robert William Hollis, Staff Sergeant, RNZIR, joined the Army as a regular force cadet in January 1974 and took his release from the service in December 1994. Uh, he passed away on the 27th of March, age 66. The funeral service for Robbie was held at the Evans Funeral Chapel on Saturday the 30th of March at 11 o'clock, and he is now buried at Toruhiru Cemetery in Gisborne. Nothing from the RNZAF today. Um, Frank, would you like to do the um, the ode for us? Yeah, I'll, I will. Um, just a, a, a little uh, thing with regards across the bar. For thou from out our bourne of time and place, the flood may bear me far. I hope to see my pilot face to face when I have crossed the bar. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them nor the years condemn. 
the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them. Thank you, Frank. And thank you uh, for joining us this morning or today. And uh, look out in the uh, Facebook page and our website for those two articles, one from RNZ RSA and the other is the um, article about um, the Minister of Veterans Affairs' view of things he'd like to get his hands on and maybe um, hold discussions, I think, is the term he uses <coughs> yeah. in relation to um, service, post-service. And one of the things he raised that caught me, um, well, I've been, I guess I've been aware of, is the fact that there's no system. So when you leave the NZ Defence, you're not automatically assigned to Veterans Affairs. It's been left as an opt-in system. And people, um, I guess as time goes by, they get to a point where, oh, we've got to do something now because I'm getting a bit old and the things are starting to ache, as opposed to being kind of walking out of the camp one morning or off a ship, uh, taking the uniform off and already knowing that you're part of the Veterans Affairs system so that it's just a matter of making contact with them. All your details there, medical history, everything's there, and you make your application, and life is a lot easier, streamlining how it goes for the future. So anyway, watch that space, and we'll see what happens. Thank you, Frank, and um, right. have a good day wherever you are. Don't forget to um, pick up the phone and ring those who you know. Check on them to make sure they're okay and they're... Um, the coping in life and uh, if you're coming under some kind of financial stress or whatever it is as the uh, economy tightens up a bit don't be afraid to uh, make contact with someone and we can hook you up with um, the RSA or someone who might be able to guide you through the processes and make life a bit easier so that's us for today last words from you Frank no just uh, keep um, safe out there there's uh, been too many deaths on the roads over these last Easter um, I I can't work out why, but uh, there we go. Just keep safe on those roads. Nice one. Thank you, Frank. And um, we'll see you all same place um, next week. <laughs>